I'm going to tell you a secret. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, hello. I have been telling myself for years that I was going to start doing YouTube videos. And I've always checked out. So you know what? We're doing it today. So a while ago, I was commissioned by my friend Brittany to actually help her make a cell cape. The reason for that was we work as party princesses sometimes and we want her to be able to stay warm and functional during the parade while also being completely accurate. So the project I'm going to be working on is making the beautiful red and white cape from Beauty and the Beast. And back in the summer we actually already went fabric shopping. So we already have all of the red velvet and the white fur trim. <laughs> white fur everywhere. We haven't even started yet. I'm just going to be using a pattern for my stash just because supplies are a little limited and I don't really have a lot of time this weekend to fully draft a brand new pattern. I am going to have to take out the front panel pieces and just keep the side panel pieces. Also there's no piece in the pattern that I'm using for the little capelet or closure in the front so I'm going to be coming up with that on the fly. So one of the things that I'm noticing as I'm looking through all these supplies is that the white trim that we purchased only is two inches wide and I need four inches. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do a curbside pickup and see if we can get some more. Intros are not my strong suit, if you couldn't tell. Is anything really my strong suit? I do not have the luxury of having a cutting table or space for a cutting table. So until then, and until I can have my own house, I'm going to continue to be cutting all of my fabric on the floor and just hating my lower back for the next few days. So, uh, pattern pieces that I cut out, I'm realizing are too big for the folded fabric. So now I have to open and cut from there. Once I had the fabric unfolded, I pinned down the side back panel in a way that would optimize the most use of my fabric and cut that out. Since the underside of the cape is constantly showing, I decided to line the cape with the velvet itself, so I repeated that step three times, giving me four panel pieces. Then Joanne's told me my order was ready to be picked up. I didn't record myself driving because safety. All right, got the actual size trim that we need, so let's get back inside and get back to it. Doing some further digging, I did find that I had a pattern with a tiny capelet, however it didn't match the pattern that I had originally used, so I just needed to extend it to be able to give me the proper seam allowance. I wanted to make sure that Brittany could get the cape on and off while still being able to wear a wig, so I went through my patterns and found the biggest hood I could find and just planned on gathering the neckline to make it fit properly. I hate cutting fabric on the floor so much. Unfortunately, I am not blessed with a house that has a large enough space for a proper cutting table. So until then, I'm going to continue to cut fabric on the floor, and then lay on the floor for three hours later until my back feels better. <sighs> Alright, so it is the next day. Uh, yesterday was just cutting out all of the fabric just because it's a lot of big pieces. Um, I couldn't have the fabric folded, so I had to cut a lot of them individually with everything laid out because you, they were too big. The back is feeling much better, and so the goal today is just to get everything put together, literally everything, because I'm hoping that tomorrow, if the weather is nice, I can deliver it to Brittany and we can have a nice photo shoot, and I'm really excited, so let's get to it. I started off by pinning the side back pieces together at the back seam and stitching those. I did that for both the outer fabric and the pieces that would become the lining. Since this project's going to be lined, I didn't worry about finishing the edges. With right sides together, I then pinned both the outer fabric and the lining fabric together and stitched along what would be the outer side seams, leaving both the neckline and the hem unstitched. The next step is going to be attaching the trim.
I made the mistake of wearing a black shirt while working with white fur. I feel fabulous. Next, I fold the trim in half wrong sides together and sandwich that between the outer cape pieces. I pinned at the hem and stitched all together. Then using the open neckline, I turned right side out and began working on the capelet piece. I attached the back pieces together, creating the back seam, and the two front pieces to the back piece at the side seams, leaving the front open. I pinned the front together, but I'm only going to be sewing from the second pin down to create a closure so Brittany can get the cape on and off. To finish the edge of the closure, I folded under the same amount as the seam allowance and top stitched about a quarter of an inch away from the edge, and repeated that on both sides of the closure. At this point, you should check on your favorite Rick because he's working hard too. Hey you. I'm not lining the capelet, so this time to attach the trim, I'm going to be attaching it with right sides together. My trim wasn't quite long enough, so to fix this, I had to stitch together two pieces, but I used a seam ripper to pull as much fur out of the seam as I could, and then used a comb just to comb everything into the right direction, so that way you wouldn't see the seam from the front. Then I stitched it together. To finish the hem of the capelet, I folded the trim in half with wrong sides together, making sure to catch the seam allowance inside. Then I used a whip stitch to hand stitch everything closed, making sure that the stitches were not visible from the front. I attached the capelet to the cape by stitching the raw edges of the necklines together. Next up is the hood. I pinned right sides together and stitched from the forehead all the way down to the back of the neck, creating the back seam, and I did that for both the outer piece and the lining piece. I finished the edge of the hood the same way I did for the hem of the cape, by folding the trim in half with wrong sides together and sandwiching between the two right sides of the hood. Once that was stitched, I ran two rows of gathering stitches along the neckline of the hood so that way I could gather it to match the exact neckline of the cape. Here is where I unfortunately missed actually filming putting that together. To try to explain what I did, I pinned the gathered neckline to the hood with right sides together and stitched using a machine. I then ran more gathering stitches along the lining piece, pinned that in, and hand stitched it making sure to encase the raw edges inside. Does that sound complicated? Probably does. I'm sorry for that, but moving on to closures. The last thing I did was to hand stitch on this frog closure, making sure it was secure enough to hold the weight of the cape. And with that, everything was finished. So it is the next day. I was able to finish everything last night. However, I have just realized that the lighting in my apartment, particularly in the room that I sew in, is absolutely horrible. So um, some of the stuff I wasn't able to actually get on video, and but now I know how to fix that for next time. So now let's go deliver to Brittany. <laughs> Hey guys, I just want to say thank you for sticking around and taking the time to watch the video. If there are any projects that you'd like to see me do, definitely let me know in the comments below. Make sure to hit like and subscribe so I know that people want to stick around and see more. Thanks.